Dividing one polynomial by another can get a little bit tricky. Um, oftentimes we use what's called long division, and we can review how that works by, let's just think back to sometime in a previous math life when we had to divide one number by another. So this is 251 divided by 3. We might have written this as 251 divided by 3, or 251 divided by 3. Okay, and then we said, okay, so uh, what do we do here? We asked ourselves, how many times does 3 go into 2? Well, it doesn't. It's too big. So then we moved over here. How many times does 3 go into 25 without going over? Well, it goes in 8 times. So we'd put an 8 up here, and we'd say 8 times 3 is 24. We subtract those off. That gives us 1. And then we bring down this one. Remember this? Long division numbers. And we'd say, how many times does 3 go into 11 without going over? Well, it goes in uh, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract that off, and we get 2. And then this bit down here would be the remainder. Remainder. Okay, so that's how we divided numbers. Polynomial division is similar. It's the same kind of idea. Um, we set up our division symbol. So let's do that here. Okay, something like that. Let's make it a little more flat. Okay. And then the thing on the top, the, the numerator part here goes inside of this division symbol. x squared plus 7x plus 10. And down goes out x plus 5. Down goes out. So whatever's in the denominator becomes, we call this the divisor out here. Divisor. Okay. Um, let's see here. And then we would say, okay, we would ask ourselves right here, we're looking at, at this x, and then we say, what? Well, I won't write the whole thing out. It's absurd we would say, what do we have to multiply this x by to get it to line up exactly with this x squared? All right, what do we have to multiply this x out here by to get it to line up exactly with x squared? Well, what do you think? I think the answer is x, right? If we multiply x by x, it's gonna line up exactly with x squared. And that technique is what we use over and over again to, the, to uh, divide these polynomials, right? Indeed, it's x. Okay, then we multiply through here to both these terms, and we put it under, directly under, and your first term should always cancel. So we have x times x is x squared. x times 5 plus 5x, and then you subtract, right? So then after that, you subtract this right here, and I put parentheses around it, to remind me that this negative goes all the way through to both terms. We're subtracting off both terms here. Well, by design, these x squareds cancel out, so we're good to go there. And then we have 7x minus 5x, 2x. All right, and then just like we brought down over here with the numbers, we bring down this plus 10. Okay, back to the x, the, back to the x plus 5, and we ask ourselves again, what would we have to multiply x by to get it to line up exactly under 2x? Well, the answer is 2. All right, so we're going to say plus 2 up here, and then we're going to multiply this 2 by both of these terms and bring it down beneath that. All right, so we have, oops, we have x times x, or sorry, 2 times x, 2x, 2 times 5 is plus 10, then we subtract off, every time we subtract here, 2x minus 2x is 0, 10 minus 10 is 0. So there is no remainder on that one. And then at the end, what you have left up here, on top of the division symbol, this is your answer. x plus 2. Eventually, we'll get remainders down here, but 
when we first start with these, there's no remainder. We don't have to worry about that. And honestly, it's not much worse when there is a remainder. All right.